Good morning, Kubernetes fans, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here coming to the conclusion of our three days of coverage on theCUBE, but not before some scintillating final segments. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with, you guessed it, Rob Streche. Rob, we got some cool stuff coming up. I, I'm, I'm excited for, I'm as excited for today as I have been for the last two days. I think there's a lot of getting into a lot of the community and what's going on and unpacking that and how people can get actually get involved. I, I think that's a big piece of it. It so. really is a big piece of it. And today is celebration. Ten, to, ten years of Kubernetes is the theme today, very exciting. Speaking of community, who better to talk about it than Taylor? Welcome back to the show. Like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, yeah, it's Friday, it's uh, just like you said, the, it just, I, I'm amazed how we're able to keep this week going each and every single day. A little bit of donuts, a little bit of coffee, we figure out how to And the oxygen bar, I don't know if you've had a yeah. chance to hit that up, but no, that was a little bit of a, a, need to check a, that out. a boost. Yeah. Just, 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 you know, just keeps, <laughs> keeps you going. Every, you need all the help you can get. It's been an awesome week for you all. So many announcements, so much data. What are some of the standouts and highlights for you as, as someone in charge of the ecosystem? I think for me, I've really liked seeing the end user community bring forward the CNCF tech radar. I'm so happy that's back. Like, humble brag with the end user community. It's, I'm really happy to see that. They, uh, in all of that survey data too, they've been sharing with us the gaps that they've been experiencing too. Also, really helping to level set with all of our community members, governing board members, TOC, et cetera. Uh, I think even Lachlan Evanson on the stage today was talking about security and complexity, and those were the top two things that end users were sharing. So, really fun to see all these things. All the things that you say in those meetings, propagating up and having the right people talk about that as they decide on products, strategies, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I think that was what we were noticing is that there was security was back here. And it yeah. seems like you're bringing uh, OSS, OSSF back, you know, the open source uh, yeah. security. Uh, suits, yeah. I know, it's like <laughs> everything's coming back together again <laughs> for, for London and beyond. It seems like you're bringing it back together to co-locate almost like you do with the day zeros, which makes a lot of sense. I think, that is, was that an ask from the community and what you saw? Or? Definitely. I think what uh, Kelsey was at, Kelsey Hightower was at one of the events yesterday and someone had asked him, What's the, what does the future hold? Kind of hinting at AI and some things on that front. And he just put it perfectly. He's like, the future is what you're working on. What are you working on? And so he's, and then he kind of launched through all these other things going on. AI is definitely within the sphere of everything going on, but we still have platform engineering, security, not just features, but end users are looking at ways to configure that. So that's the confusion, hence complexity, interoperability, all these other things. Um, developer experience also really shining through. And then as we're seeing all these new people come into the community, conversations I've been having with them is like, where did you come from? You know, it's, it's rather than the state and the, their locale, they're like, I'm seeing a lot of developers come into the fray. And so that's the interesting thing is this used to just be a whole bunch of infrastructure people. Now we're seeing all these different fields converge because Kubernetes and all of these other projects are proliferating so much. Yeah. I, I, I love that you just said that because I, I was going to ask you about it anyway. It feels like we're having a, a bit of a community moment where the attention is both on open source, on Kubernetes, on AI, but also collaboration in a way that we haven't seen in, in this technological revolution until I feel like right now. Would you agree with that? 100%, 100%. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm always, uh, I, I love my job because I get to hear all these people's stories. Like, yeah. pay me in stories, there used to be that gum. Like, pay me in gum? No, pay me in stories. I love hearing all of them. You hear these people that used to be, like, one person I talked to is like, a cook in a restaurant, they learned about Kubernetes, completely changed their life. Uh, project manager, now an engineer. Physicist, now in the Kubernetes ecosphere. It's so cool to see, and so, it's, yeah, it's, it's really having a moment. I, those are the stories I really like to hear, obviously, but yeah. really cool. Yeah, and I, I think, again, what we've been hearing and talking to people all week, and you know, we're 26 talks in right yeah, at the yeah, moment, yeah. you start to hear some really common themes. Like you said, AI came up, and there's a lot, of, a lot of focus, and people are looking at all of the different projects that are coming. And it seems like there's not only stuff happening here, but there's stuff happening in multiple different uh, I guess you could say standards bodies from that perspective in different communities, but they all seem to be kind of coming back together and intersecting here. Like some of the stuff with AI is happening at the Linux Foundation level versus at the CNCF. How do you see and what are some of the trends you're seeing in the community with the different projects? You know, I mean, it, there's more than AI ML and things like that, but 
you know, what are you seeing from the trends in that way? I think what's different about this KubeCon now, again, it's, I'll start with end users and kind of yeah. tie that all together, but um, before I'd give keynotes, I'd talk with people, and it was, these were just ideas that we were trying to share. There, there was data out there, but it just wasn't available. Now we finally are heading to KubeCon with that data in hand. We have reports, and we have a better understanding of the shape of the ecosystem. I think with AI, it's interesting to see the hype cycle, you know, personally now looking at how this works and stuff like that. I remember it back in 2016 and everything, but being older, getting to see it in the way it's happening now is really interesting. What seems to happen is that all of these foundations are kind of, you know, let's be honest, everybody wants to be the first one. They're like, oh, we got it, you know? And so that's what happens when something like AI comes along. So mm -hmm. all the foundations are looking at the projects, trying to figure things out, the different ecosystems, like, do we have it? Do we have it? Do we have it? And now we're starting to say like, okay, this is really tiring. Let's slow down, let's establish some standards or like agree on what makes sense for all of us and go a little bit slower. That's when you see the cross communication really start to happen, stability takes over. And I'm guessing that's what we're going to see over the coming months is just this like a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more stoic approach to AI and then really focusing in on what are you actually doing, right? AI, it's been, that's been lauded as the feature, but it's not. It's a part, it's an ingredient in the mix of the cool things that you make. And so now we're looking at what are the cool things that you're making Let's talk about how that works. Yeah, as Bobby Allen, who who also works with Kel, or used to work with Kelsey, I should say rather, he says it's the sauce, not the main dish. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think that's that's absolutely right. I, I 100% agree with you on the cadence. It felt like everyone rushed to try and yeah. get some compute, not, figure something out, not spend a bunch of money, in the world. try yeah. and realize <laughs> yeah. some level of ROI, and and in an insane time to value without necessarily asking the right questions to solve the right problems and reverse engineer their solution. I love the conversations that we've had this week because I feel that so many people, to our earlier point about collaboration, are coming together. We don't all need to go reinvent the wheel every, in different wheels all over the place. Everyone should have the same chassis, put on some wheels, and then build all their little magical you know, art cars on top of that. And then show and tell, and that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's really nice to, to hear that. There's also a lot more, well, it's actually the same consistent new participation in this community as we were just talking about. For those who don't know, 50% of KubeCon attendees pretty much forever have always, <laughs> been, have always been new or first timers. It tells me a lot about how inviting this community is. So what would you say specifically, Taylor, as someone so intimately involved with it, to someone who maybe has been watching the show or hearing some of the keynotes or seeing things on Twitter this week and, and are thinking, man, I'd really like to get involved with this community, particularly right now, what would you say? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that sometimes do it. Yeah, that's step one, uh, that's 100%. Uh, when it comes to getting involved, there are some things. That's, I think, the most difficult thing for people is that, you know, the intention's there. I want to do, I want to do the open source. I want to be in cloud native, but making sense of the landscape and all this, there's a, it's, it's like a sprawling neighborhood. It's yeah. wild. Um, it, taking a look at the landscape is good. There's two different things I recommend. It, one is have an idea of the place that you want to go. I know that's easier said than done, but do you like databases? Do you like login? Do you like apps and, and developing those things or configuring them? What's the shape of what you like to do? Is yeah. it a thing or is it a specific project that really speaks to you and that you're familiar with? That's something that's a good, helpful place to start. Then you can start diving into that community, the Slack channels, the meetings. You could go lurk on YouTube and watch some previous meetings. Um, I do have some good news for people that are just starting out with those meetings too. They're not going to assign you work. You can come camera off, just listen, <laughs> listen to all the acronyms and things. You welcome lurkers. Pretty good way to yeah. start. It's just like, and then again, the community is really nice with shadow programs and other things in many projects. So that's how I got started way back in the day. Um, I think who you had on uh, earlier, N Natasha, I started working with her. She was my intro to Kubernetes, George Castro, oh, and so uh, Caitlin Bernard, who works at Kong now. So I get to see all these people again. And then that happens too. You keep seeing the same people, things start to make sense, you can understand the acronyms, and then that fun. confidence comes on that front. One thing I just want people to note just on that, because it, it matters, is it's not just these these groups. There's there's very specific working groups, Stefan Hart of Hearing Working Group. Mm -hmm. I know there's a blind working group that's coming together. There's also Kubernetes Kids Day. There's a ton. I mean, it's it's truly one of the most age-inclusive, yeah. diverse communities to come in and dig in. All right, Rob, I know you got a question. No, no I, I think, again, it, it, I think you hit on a lot of things. It's, I think, what has it's become the infrastructure 
place to go, like the, the infrastructure yeah. show, because I think you know, open source, we, we say it a lot, has won in many, many respects. And I, I think, again, when you start to look at it, it's one enough that you have trolls and patent trolls and everything coming that was in the day yeah, one discussion. Yeah, what an discussions. interesting market indicator, right? Yeah, yeah. And and it's like, oops, I'm wearing green. Is that a problem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but when you look at it, I, I think the, the discussions have been even different this, this KubeCon. It's been about scale. There's been a lot about scale, about multi-cluster, about multi-cloud, multi-location. How do you see some of the challenges that are still out there that are being addressed now, how have they changed over the last few years? Because it looks like everybody said Kubernetes is done. Like, yeah. I, I think I even said it, the last one. And I, I said, but then we get here and it's like, okay, well, it's not done here, it's not done there. There's still, it's still a little difficult, rough edges over here. What are you seeing from that? Well, that's even been the theme for, of Kubernetes for a long time, right? It's like, this is the stability release, like probably like even going from like 114 to 119 way back in the day when I got started, feels like 30 years ago, wasn't it? Probably just, you know, like two, three. Tech years uh, are yeah. not the same as yes. normal no, years. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, the, they are much larger rings on the tree. Yeah, uh, yes, they <laughs> are. Uh, thinking back, it's, it's just, you know, that's something that's been stable for so long, but we still get surprised with features and things like that. I've, I've thought the same thing too. It's, it's, are you done? Are you done with Kubernetes? And oh, no, it's still relevant again and making sense of all these things. Um, I, I, I think that as, as time's going to go forward on that one, it's, um, it, that's, that's also going to be pretty interesting too. We keep bringing apps back to the same place. Um, you know, we, we've always wanted to write once run anywhere, we're seeing WASM come up and all these different workloads, but we're seeing the same problems emerge, right? We're, we want to run applications. I think Kubernetes is still going to be viable for a long time. I am hoping it's going to fade into the background a little bit more on that front. But we see that cycle too of mainframe, personal computer, mainframe, personal computer, HPE, that bounce back I think is going to happen again, especially with GPUs and things like that now too. If you want to stay current with everything that's working on that front, uh, really hard to get one right now. So using a service is going to make sense until we can commoditize that and push that back to people at the edge. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was, I think it was uh, Suda on Wednesday who said she's, she's looking forward to it becoming boring. You know, yes. days in the background. Yeah. And then yeah. we go work on another thing. And, it, and it's interesting. I mean, 10 years is a big milestone. Clearly adoption accelerating with AI hunger. And, and, and just kind of a really interesting moment. Um, I'm curious because we, obviously there's so many different projects in your ecosystem. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. But what are some of the, the newer projects that you find real interesting that people might not know about yet? Some of, some of them, I'd say it, I, I, need to, I need, do need to update my flashcards, my mental flashcards, and I've got a colleague, Bob Killen, who actually is, has been working on those. I think he knows just about every project. Um, some of the ones that I've been interested in lately are uh, the Karmada, like some of the more batch and AI and ML things. I've been really blown away by Argo CD and just how that's also been something that's been selected for multi-cluster and all these batch workloads too. Um, that's kind of where I have my personal focus on. Uh, open telemetry also just like very older yeah. project, but converging other projects. Also having like a that. moment though, I would say. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, even the things with FluentBit and the releases that they have, yeah. coming, it seems like there's becoming centers of gravity, which was one of the things that I was hoping to see because the, the landscape, when you show the landscape, that, that chart is like crazy. It's a magic eye. You have yes. to let your eyes relax. Correct. And you you, gotta, you gotta, <laughs> definitely got it. But are you seeing that, that there are these more centers of gravity where things are coming together more, more as solutions versus projects in that way? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best advice that we can give people is don't bind to the project. You know, as much as I love them, don't bind to the project, bind to the workflow or the specification. Then you're going to have a much easier time switching things out, right? If, if that's like, that's the microwave that you use to make all your food, that's not going to work if it breaks or something like that or something happens. Um, yeah, it's it, things like Wasm and other stuff are also coming up. And so that's interesting to see these little places where, okay, this used to be infrastructure for a long time. Kubernetes was pretty much it. And then when that slowed, slowed down, it became stable, and we're still doing that day over day, but we saw the contributions start to go down. But if you looked at the CNCF as a whole, it's still up and to the right because, yeah. oh, new problem space, Argo, GitOps. 
application and, de and deployment and configuration, all of these new things come about, which I think is kind of cool. So we just slow down with some of the old problem spaces and then we get to focus on these new ones. And there's, at the end of the road are only more roads, right? So it's never going to stop. It's, it's continuous improvement, continuous building, and continuous yeah. collaboration, which is But really take great. a break, yeah, get some water before you go on your yeah. next run, for <laughs> yeah, sure. Especially yeah. this altitude, <laughs> yeah. as my yes. voice <laughs> speaking up. <laughs> Taylor, you're, you could be sitting on this side, you've been on theCUBE so many times, you're a regular here. I'm curious what you hope to be able to say in London next year that you can't say yet today. The fish and chips are wonderful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm here for that, yeah. amen. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely what I want to say. Uh, I, I, I think I really do want to see it's I'm still blown away by the fact that it's in April so that like as soon as we get done with this it's we're hitting the books we're getting things ready for London yeah um, I, I, I'm always excited to go over to Europe as well because I feel like it's it working with folks over there it's kind of like being in a two-year like time machine that's like what the community was here at least in the US two years ago so there's all this excitement they're figuring things out but it's with all these different perspectives and tools too so that's really interesting it's like what would, it's like an alternate history, you know, kind of, kind of situation. And then uh, tons of people, what, there's like uh, cube rail or there's like a train party going on, a bunch of people coming in. So I'm just excited to see people Whoa, over we're there that weren't able to make train. it. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. really cool, I'd yes. say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, <laughs> bringing the puns yeah. this morning, yeah. Dave Taylor. I really, I really appreciate that. But we look forward to, to checking that out and we'll be there. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the whole CUBE team for yeah, having us thanks for here. having me. I'm, ex I'm also excited it's on April Fool's Day. I might do some lobbying to try to get a keynote joke in there, you know, on yeah. April Fool's Day, but oh, we'll I see mean, what happens. You know how nerds love a good pun or a good joke, so I think that would, <laughs> I think that would be very welcome in this community. <laughs> Taylor, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us today, as always. And thank you, Rob. Yeah. And thank all of you for tuning in to our three brimful days here in Salt Lake City, Utah at KubeCon North America. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.